Greetings, friends, future lords of their own land. That's where I'm at. Currently reading from Weiss's Concise Trust Handbook. I wanted to give a little tidbit, something I thought was interesting for all of us to know. Praise the Lord. Allow me to find it. Under page four of the handbook, Declaration of the Express Trust. I'll read this whole section. It's just a little... Um, Moreover, the Declaration, by its terms and provisions, serves to establish the entire contractual arrangement, including the identities and positions of the parties, the trust's name, jurisdiction, and sitdas, and all particulars of administration all of which the courts of equity will fully support by the principle that equity compels performance. The ultimate result is the creation of a bona fide legal entity with its own separate and distinct judicial, judicial, judicial personality, with its own judicial personality. Withstanding to sue and be sued, and to function as a person in commerce by and through its trustees. The term natural person has been applied to express trusts by courts of equity because of its administration being carried out by men acting as natural persons. And then see note 24. Note 24. A generally unknown fact is that there are several types of citizens now existing in America, the continent of America. The trustees or trustee of an express trust may seek protection under the constitutions as state citizens through the union of states. A ju juris ju jurisdiction, a jurisdiction outside the scope of the 14th amendment which we will later discuss in later sections. However, it should also be noted of all citizenship, 14th Amendment or otherwise, that jurisdiction over natural and artificial persons is distinguished without a fundamental difference. This stems, surprisingly, from the operation of in rem jurisdiction, which underlies all civil law, though all courts are familiar with the action in personam against persons. It is the action in rem against things, which, though practiced only in maritime law, stealthily operates in every civil and criminal court. This principle is one of the least understood in its entirety. In rem against things, in rem jurisdiction over a man or woman can only exist if the man or woman is a slave. Example, property or res, meaning an object, property or res, in which case his or her disposition at law is no different than if he or he were, must, must have meant to say she, if he or she were a horse or other goods. Disposition at law is no different than if he or she were a horse or other goods. See the zoning. No. See the zong. Gregson versus Gilbert, 1783. In nature, in rem jurisdiction is exercised over man and woman by their creator exclusively. Governments can therefore gain only a fictional in rem jurisdiction over men by creating various legal devices, personas for those men to assume limited control of, example, citizen, taxpayer, driver, etc. Since the device is legal fiction, meaning not real, a falsehood made true by force of law. Since the device is legal fiction, a falsehood made true by force of law. This persona is in fact a legal object or res. 
just as in theater, the persona, person, is separate from the man or woman playing the part. Therefore, there may be artificial persons, but not artificial men. Natural persons, but not natural men. American Law and Procedures, Volume 8, pages 156. The word person defined, Gaius says, de juris divisa, divisone, the divisions of law, immediately preceding his division of the law, then follows de condition hominum, meaning the conditions or status of men. In the Institutes, de jura personarum precedes the expression, all our civil law relates either to persons or to things or to actions. Persons, things, or actions. The words persona and persona, with an E, did not have the meaning in the Roman which attaches to homo, the individual, or a man in the English. It had particular, no, it, it had peculiar reference to artificial beings and the condition or status of individuals Citations omitted, bold and italics, emphasis added. In footnote 11, we get at the modern application and its implications. The word person, in its primitive and natural sense, signifies a mask which, with which actors who played dramatic pieces in Rome and Greece covered their heads. These pieces were played in public places and afterwards in such vast amphitheaters that it was impossible for a man to make himself heard by all the spectators and later by all judges. Recourse was had to art. The head of each actor was enveloped with a mask, the figure of which represented the part he was to play, and it was so contrived that the opening for the emission of his voice made the sound clearer and more resounding. Vox persona bait. When the name persona was given to the instrument or mask, which facilitated the, res the resounding of his legal voice, the name persona was afterward applied to the part itself, which the actor had undertaken to play. The actor had undertaken to play. Because the face of the mask was adopted to the age and character of him who was considered as speaking, and sometimes it was his own portrait. It is in this last sense of personage, or of the part which an individual plays, that the word persona is employed in jurisprudence. In opposition to the word man, homo, when we speak of a person, we only consider the state of the man, the part he plays in society, abstractly, without considering the individual. Bove inst. Note 1. Logic follows that if the man plays no part in a society, then he has no personal attachment or obligation thereto. The trustee or trustees, under a declaration of an express trust, express trust, are only persons in the private sense because he is only a person once he has accepted the role offered to him by the settler. I believe settler means grantor. Private persons may also pursue constitutional protection as natural persons citizens within the meaning of article 4 section 2 of the constitution and may thereby claim entitlement to all the privileges and immunities of the same see general see generally paul versus virginia 1868 even though in today's economic situation the term citizen is presumed to signify the 14th amendment citizen the term cannot be applied to express trusts when administered properly 
In contrast, corporations as artificial persons are citizens of the United States within the meaning of the 14th Amendment per Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Arco, 1886. God bless you all. Know your rights. Otherwise, you don't have any. Peace and love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for our sins. You've been exonerated. Learn about it. Learn about it. Miraculously enough, um, I'm started to re read Galatians as this video is mixing down. And under number two, at four, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. So after saying, he had to, they had to put in brackets whatsoever they were, because they didn't know what they were. They were artificial. And then God accepteth no man's person. Um... Yes. Review, please. Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that we might be, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. God bless you all.